Okay, we're starting with this topic. Is 2020 the worst year of your life? Apparently, 50% of Canadians <laughs> surveyed in a Leger poll said yes. Up until now, it is, in fact, the worst year that they've ever lived. Do you agree? I I don't know that I agree for me, um, but whenever we have conversations about the worst year and bad luck in a certain year. I always think about, you know, my ma, cause she's really superstitious and she follows Chinese Zodiac. And there are always predictions at the beginning of the year with Zodiac prediction, uh, with Zodiac and the signs. So, um, this is the year of the metal rat. There are five elements in Chinese astrology. A metal is one of them. And so is water. And this year, both metal and water were supposed to be in abundance, but metal heavier than water. So metal sinks in water. And so a lot of the experts were saying that that foretells or that foretold back at the beginning of the year, natural disasters and certain calamities, which you could say came true if you believe it. Um, my mom the other day had a conversation with me about the month of August and uh, we call this a, like a silver dollar month in Chinese culture, because in this month of August, um, there are five Saturdays, five Sundays, and five Mondays. And a lot of people consider it to be quite lucky, but energy affects be different people in different ways. So what's good energy for you, maybe not so good energy for other people. So my ma in particular is watching all of these things when it comes to the assessment of the month and also the year at large. It's so interesting, uh, Lane, what your ma says about metal in water and sinking in water, because I was thinking it's that whole ability to stay afloat. And I haven't felt so strong sometimes. And it's one thing to navigate these times if you're on your own. It's quite another to navigate these times when you have kids, because there are days when I have not felt so great and have tried to be strong for my kids, you know, put on a brave face for them. Uh, it was difficult from, you know, just the pandemic and then George Floyd and BLM uh, and then, you know, learning at home which was really you know, difficult for Blaze. So just trying to keep on top of all of that was hard. And at the risk of sounding Dickensian, it was the best of times, or it is, and it's the worst of times. It really depends on the day. <laughs> I hear you, Marcy. Um, Arlene on Twitter wrote us and said, please, this was nothing. In 2010, my mom died in January. In June, my brother died. My 84-year-old dad came to live with me and my spouse. In 2018, he slowly died from dementia. So get over yourself if you think being on lockdown was tough. Arlene, first of all, my heart goes out to you. I'm thinking of you. Those are a, a series of years that you've mentioned that did not sound easy. And I suppose you're highlighting something that is really important. It is all relative. I mean, for some, this opportunity um, this year has presented opportunities that maybe they hadn't even thought of. It's allowed them an opportunity to work from home, to be with their kids more. That's certainly been true for me. Um, for people who've also had family members or loved ones who have suffered from this this. Um, uh, from COVID-19, that would present a different perspective. I think of also all the young people right now who are trying to get started in their life and trying to forge relationships or start out in their careers. And this is pre presenting particularly unique challenges. Um, but like Marcy said, there are, have been a number of silver linings that I don't think wouldn't would have happened had we not all collectively slowed down. Like th this is unprecedented in the way that everyone in the world is experiencing something similar. Um, I can't think of another time that that's particularly happens. Uh, so for me personally, I think we, uh, my bag is pleasure. I started out this year wonderfully. Like I launched my book. I got to do an amazing tour and meet all these people. And then all of a sudden it was locked down. And so I wrote this book about pleasure. And so obviously the situation has made me reflect a lot about pleasure. And one of the things that, that has struck me is how much more you appreciate things when they are scarce. 
And that is true for friendships. And that is true for, um, I mean, just about everything. Like right the other day, we went and had a socially distant visit with Lainey and uh, we sat in her backyard at a distance. And, and Yasik, of course, ordered in sushi. And I don't think I'd had sushi since like, <laughs> I don't know, February. And so eating that again was just this hmm. sublime experience. So when you have things that are more rare, you, you experience them differently. So that's one of the gifts for me personally that I've experienced in 2020. Uh, Cheryl wrote to us on Facebook and she said, uh, worst year ever, not at all. My beautiful daughter was born a rainbow baby that was wanted so very much. And I got to spend quality time with those I love. How could that be bad? I love the slow pace of 2020 and learning to appreciate the little things. It's good for the soul. Uh, and I think that, as you said, um, yes. Cynthia, it depends on what lens, what have you experienced? If you're one of the 9,000 families that has lost a loved one to COVID, this is probably the worst year of your life. And then there's other stories of birth and renewal and reflection. So I think you're right. It depends where you're coming from. I think more broadly for me that there's a lesson within this lesson because I have a little person in my home who's six years old and she doesn't understand the world as much as she does through my lens and how I'm handling this. So this is the lesson for me is how I handle this pandemic is going to greatly impact how she may handle challenges in her future as a young person and as an adult. Are we talking doom and gloom in this house? Is this the scariest virus ever? Or are we talking about creative solutions to overcome this challenge. It's a real litmus test I've been finding as to how generally we handle difficulty. So you're either going to become hopefully a more resilient person out of this, um, or are you going to be a person who sort of resorts into the scary victim mentality um, and, and not find creative solutions and ways around this? So I'm really, really cognizant of the stuff that's being said and done in my house because of Marquesa, which is really interesting because it forces you to get to that higher place and maybe not worry so much um, down here.